Hey friends, welcome to this week's video. We're continuing along with the sort of snow focused technology just because I'm continuing my ski trips. And I have a follow up from when I did the Wildhorn Altas before. I did that in a Vermont shoot. I wasn't very happy with those, just with, in terms of response and how they sounded. So I looked for other alternatives and that's where this video comes in. And we again are going to be looking at helmet audio again. But obviously with my new audio master om1's helmet audio pucks i don't know i think they're called audio pucks for helmets but this is essentially what we're gonna go over so let's go over the specs and then we'll talk more about if i like them or not The Outdoor Master BT-01 and the Wildhorn Alta share a lot of the same form factor characteristics even down to their cases. While the same shape enclosures, the Outdoor Master case is smaller and has more weather resistant materials. Opening the case you really see how similar these guys are. Similar presentation, storage, etc. But the Outdoor Master does have better cable management for stowing away securely. Unfortunately, both devices charge via micro USB rather than a USB-C but the Outdoor Masters give you five more hours over the Alta's 10 hour charge time. I found both these numbers to be accurate in terms of battery life. From a build perspective, they carry very similar silhouettes, but the Outdoor Masters are a little bit more round while the Altas go for a flatter aesthetic. However, the materials seem to be better on the Outdoor Master with textured buttons, more substantial cable housing, and a more solid audio plate. Notice how the Altas plates come off. I've had these come off in my helmet, and in storage before. Moving on to the second most important part of these headphones, going to the buttons. The Altas somewhat win here with the more logical button layout, where up means volume up and next track, and down being the inverse, with the Outdoor Master being forward button mean previous track and volume down, and the next track and volume up being on the back button. You can make them more logical by placing the Outdoor Master cable side up in the ear pads to follow suit with the Altas. While the layout is better than the Altas, the buttons are tremendously more tactile and satisfying on the Outdoor Master. Listen to the travel and feedback comparison here. Lastly, let's revisit thickness. The Outdoor Master's thickness is likely due to its better drivers and bigger battery, but it doesn't come costless. While it's the same operation of inserting your pucks into your helmet as the Altas, they require a bit more finessing to get them into their spot due to their bulk. However, once they're in there, they will move around less than the Altas would. So now that we've sort of went through all of the specifications and comparisons that you would need to understand these headphones. Let's talk about fit because the chonkiness of these does impact the fit of the helmet. And what I'll say is that the thicker your ear pads are, the better compliant these will be. The thinner, the worse. So let me take the one that I'm taking to my trip to Telluride, um, which is the Maze from Smith. The Maze Helmet's like a lifestyle helmet. It doesn't have all the technical features. It does have MIPS on it, um, but they do have these big furry ear pads, which work out really, really well for the chunkiness of this uh, ear, these ear pucks. Ear pucks? Audio pucks? I'm, again, not exactly sure the name, but yeah. So on head, they, they don't seem like they protrude that much. But if you take these OMs out, the OMs are currently in here. They, they stick out a little bit less, but they still make the silhouette look pretty dope. Like I'm not really having an issue here. I barely feel them. 
the extra cushioning is helping here. But again, this is a warmer ear pad because of the extra space. So depending on how your helmet is, it may not emulate this exactly. But for the maze, these guys are perfect. I love how this feels and nothing really is affected. I don't feel any extra pressure, it's dope. However, if you have something more technical, you may have something that will have thinner ear pads just for more breathability. So like this is a more expensive helmet from Smith um, that has more mesh-like ear pads with more breathability built into it. As a result, there's less padding and there's also, um, you know, little cutouts and things like that to add more, more uh, airflow. But because they're thinner, that means that putting these on your head, you will feel the OMs a little bit more. So you will notice that these will stick out a lot more in terms of overall looks in terms of your silhouette. Right now, it's super close to my head because those OMs are not in this helmet. However, these would stick out um, a little bit more with those pucks in there. And it's, it's more obvious because the padding is thinner. However, it's not going to be an issue for you from a comfort perspective. While it is, it, it really just locks in your helmet more. Um, but if you like that sort of free movement and uh, the ability, like that space between your ears a little bit, um, I guess that might be an issue for you. But for me, I was really having no big issue on the mountain uh, with these. I did a whole trip in Aspen with it and every day I was using them and didn't really have comfort issues. If anything, the biggest thing was that these would block out sound a little bit more. So like communicating with my friends, especially like if I'm trying to tell them to go left or right, that was a little bit harder when they had it in. So I would like scream like, like a command, like go left, take that trail. And they weren't hearing it because it was blocking their earbuds. So it really just depends on how much space is in that ear pad for you. But for me, these work tremendously well. And if you're sort of just doing solo rides or just something like in the back country where you're a little bit more isolated, I think these would be perfect. The places that it won't work is when you're really thin or non-existent. So this is the, like a newer model called the Code from Smith. It's a partnership with North Face for this colorway specifically. But I know you guys see ear pads here, right? Yeah? Well, that's a figment of your imagination because these don't actually exist. I know I'm touching something, but they're not there. They really aren't. So I'll put this on my head. And there, yeah, this is paper. This isn't actually an ear pad. There's no cloth there. This is paper thin. This doesn't do anything. This doesn't help you stay warm. This doesn't do crap. So when you put these ear pucks in here, you're, it hurts. It's literally painful. It's like your head is being compressed by a vice. It's terrible. In fact, like you can't really put your helmet on with the pucks in there. So it's completely not usable. I appreciate Smith sending me this to as a stopgap for my, my warranty since they're kind of out of stock of everything. Um, but this is a terrible helmet. I wouldn't suggest this for anyone. And if you're trying to put audio into this helmet, it's not going to work for you. So definitely don't buy this quick review don't buy this but also if you have a similar helmet that has thin ear pads it's probably gonna be extremely painful for you so definitely don't recommend it for that but lesson learned here once you get these in hand i would recommend sitting you know or like wearing around the house for an hour just to make sure that this fits your setup well and that you're not going to feel discomfort on the mountain because that would suck tremendously uh, outside of that you know we've gone with specs we've gone with fit Let's go over sound. I think that's going to be the next most important thing here. And then finally, we'll wrap up with like some on mountain review and sort of shots just to round it all off. But let's go to audio.
So what do you guys think of that in terms of sound? From my perspective, these guys were able to punch a lot louder than the Altas, and for that reason, I was able to get a little bit more body out of the sound signature. So it has the challenge of not only not having a seal in your ear, but it has to pass that sound through layers of foam and cloth to give you some sound, and that's the reason why the Altas ended up being tinny and not having enough sort of detail to en be enjoyable for me is because... One, there was not enough volume to push enough sound through all that material, but also the overall signature was more tinny as well as had a lot of mud and messiness in its quality. Here, it's able to push out more volume, but also better quality. So again, we're not getting audiophile quality here. However, you're still able to get that punch, a lot more punch in the bass. You're going to get some more detail in vocals. And it's a fun sound signature. It's not going to be the most accurate sound signature, but definitely for the mountain, when you're trying to like hit moguls or plow through powder, a, a lovely vibe to have with you. So I don't have anything to complain about with it. And I think that you guys are going to really enjoy that. Um, outside the sound signature, I also recorded some microphone uh, work here just in case you do want to use it for a call. Again, it's really good for not having long conversations on the mountain, but you know, easier to talk to someone than pull out your phone. You can just use your assistant um, to initiate a call and call like a friend to understand what the rendezvous point is, which lift you there at, things like that. Quick check-ins, check -ins, it's perfect. So here's a sample of that microphone. All right, so here's the sample from the AudioMaster OM01 headphones inside of a Smith Maze helmet. What I will say is that from what the samples that I've heard so far, it does come up relatively clear. Obviously, it's not super detailed, but you can definitely discern everything that someone is saying. The biggest thing that I've noticed is that if you stay quiet or even if you just listen carefully, you could hear like a consistent white noise hiss going on in the background. So I'm going to stop talking just so you guys can hear it. So you got that, right? Like, that is something that may not annoy you, but I would imagine you're not having a full-on conversation on the mountain. This is probably more for just making sure that you can rendezvous with your friends at the bottom without having to take out your phone. You know, just call them real quick, see what lift they're at, where your rendezvous point is, etc. So I wouldn't be too concerned with that white noise. I think from a microphone perspective of what you're trying to use it for, it would definitely be serviceable and definitely a lot louder and more boomy sounding than what I heard from the Altas. So the microphones on these are, they're all right, but they're better than what I've heard from other audio pucks for sure. So maybe leading class at a much cheaper uh, option. So let's go into the rest of the review. So in terms of the microphones, I've trusted this on the mountain and my friends didn't have any issues hearing me. I did ask Samika how she heard these microphones over the Altas. And I think the the OMs did better from what her she received on her phone. Uh, we didn't test this on the mountain because we were we were like kind of in tandem throughout the entire trip. But when we were t testing it, just like you know around the house, it was extremely apparent that the OMs were a little bit better um, in terms of picking up that sound. So even the microphones seemed to be of quality enough for you to get those touch points in there. Uh, the last bit I want to go over is basically price. Price is going to be an easy one. It's 70 bucks at, on retail, but they often go on sale. So right now they're running a promotion for $20 off on Amazon. So you can get these for 50 bucks. But the promotion that I got them on were if you buy two, you get the whole thing for 50% off. So essentially you get two for one, which was perfect. So again, if you have a partner in skiing or if you have a wife or you have kids and you need to hook people up with you know, another device, it's perfect because you get, you each basically get one for 35 bucks and that's probably the best price in the market. Generally, you'd be spending a hundred plus on these things. So like, again, the Altas were a hundred bucks. The Smith version called the Alex is 150 bucks. And then there's some other company out there. I think some, it has like, it has like a bit, it has like a Bigfoot as the, um, mascot by i lose the track of their name they have wireless like true wireless pucks that don't have that wire that you saw but they also have wired pucks and i believe they're more expensive than that 35 dollar mark so i think they start going from like 65 bucks and then all the way up to 100 as well for that true wireless set um very interesting i don't think i'm gonna pick them up for a review but 35 dollars you can't beat that and it's like low cost low risk you can just stick them in and see if they work for you. If not, they, can, they have an amazing customer service. So I had a problem with one customer service immediately just sent me a new 
replacement. And again, this is not Amazon fulfillment. This is actually the outdoor master's company talking to them. They responded within 12 hours and they got me a new set extremely fast. So from a customer support and response, so fast. So that is also good solace for you. If you don't like these or something happens with them, they'll get to you and try to make you happy as soon as possible. On the first half of the trip, there were a lot more people in the mountain. So I did find myself going at lower volumes just to accommodate for more ambient noise. But the controls were extremely easy to use and that little bar there did give me some guidance on which buttons I'm clicking. The tactility definitely was a key here because I found myself changing tracks and changing volume a lot more during this half of the trip. Uh, so the whole response is very, very nice. The only thing that was a really bother was the fact that some of the gestures took a little bit longer to activate. So we took some live reactions off of our first run while wearing these headphones. So let's move to that lift footage and see if you guys can hear our initial reactions. Audio again. So run one with the audio master earplugs. They're good. They sound amazing. They sound better than the Altus for sure. Uh, they're a little bit more bulky on head. I can definitely feel them. I think on yours they don't feel as bad. Your setup, while mine's just mesh. Yeah, but it kind of squishes my ear. And oh god, okay. gotcha. <laughs> so I feel. Yeah, but they're not uncomfortable. They're just more present. Yeah. Um, controls are just as easy to access. They're just a little bit slower on the uptake. Um, in terms of like. The, I'll, I'll show you in a, in a demo later, but yeah. Um, but overall, it's good. Like you can hear things pretty well if you're doing solo. If you're trying to like work with a buddy or trying to coordinate the run you're going through, uh, what else? Oh, if you're trying to instruct someone, like they can't hear you. Um, it's just it just cuts out the sound tremendously. So if you're trying to do like learning stuff or like communication, it's not great. Unless you're calling them, obviously, who does that? Who's going to to call the entire month? Um, but overall, I think it's good so far. We'll see how it continues, but uh, solid for sure. So in the second half of the trip, a lot less people mean I could use a lot more volume. Because I didn't have to be cognizant of all that extra traffic on the mountain, I could really lock into my curves and lock into my skiing. So I could have a lot more fun. While I was still skiing with other people, I was still able to hear them. Being able to toggle the volume up was just a nice pleasure when we were going through a longer run. We did do Long Shot, which is one of the longer runs in America, and it was super dope to have a soundtrack to that skiing. But as always, we have a clip of our live reaction, so let's go to that. Audio day two. I have to, I can be louder today because there's not as many people on the runs, so I can actually explain it to like 50%. However, yesterday when it was like and rainy, not rainy, windy, and there's a million people on the slopes, I had to play this thing like a 20 or 10%. So yeah, not as fun, but today is much better. So in terms of these Outdoor Master OM1s, I like them. I will say that there are some quirks about them, like them being a little bit more chonky, as well as the changing of tracks and activation of assistant may take a little bit longer for it to activate. However, its overall sound quality and the responsiveness of the buttons in terms of its tactility definitely surpassed what I saw on the Altas and it makes it a little bit easier for me to keep these around. The added benefit of the fact that these go on sale and basically each of these units is 25 bucks makes them a lot more, you know, feasible or a lot more palatable for me. I would not rather not spend on something $100 where I don't have a lot of benefit from the audio perspective, I like the controls, um, but this seems to hit it on a notch. I think this is a good price point. And what, you know, while you bait, you will need to check if it works with your helmet, it does add a little bit of bulk there. I would say that you should definitely check these out. It's low risk. And especially if you're trying to get some jams at the end of your sort of skiing or snowboard season, I think these are perfect. So don't hesitate. I think that deal is still going out. So if you want to get you and a buddy on these, definitely check them out. Otherwise, other than that, I am going to tell a ride tomorrow and Hopefully I'll get more reviews out. Obviously the next schedule, if you looked at one of my posts, is gonna be heavily on snow gear. And I think I'm gonna try to do a few a week just so I can bang them out. So like goggles, helmets, jackets, um, snow bags, other things. There's a lot of stuff that I wanna get through, but I also don't wanna commit like a, the whole like week long sort of time frame on these, especially because they'll be shorter reviews. So hopefully like, you know, a few eight minute reviews, just going over the basic specs, telling me what I like about it in terms of um, my, my trips this season so far. And hopefully you guys can understand if you like that gear. But anyway, thank you guys so much for 
uh, liking, subscribing, commenting, do all the things that you normally do on a video that you like and love. And all of my OGs, thank you so much for joining the live streams. If you guys want to join us on that, we definitely go through a lot of the pre-work that I do in terms of the reviews that I do. So like, you know, listening sessions to listen to the music. Um, we also do random topics if I don't have something on hand that I want to go over. Um, so some of my viewers like Mark and Ali have done a great job about providing contests for us to look at. I sometimes bring in friends. So we try, we're trying to build up that a little bit more just so I can get videos to you guys more often and a little bit more casual so we can get to know each other a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to keep up with this schedule and keep things rolling out to you guys. So I hope you guys are enjoying the inflow of content and I appreciate you guys staying uh, soon. But yeah, as always, appreciate you. Peace.